How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk, and today we're going to talk about our first day on the job. I posted a comment on my Facebook page asking people what was it like the first day you started work in a prison or a jail, and I got flooded with comments. And these are great comments because they're coming from people with experience, so I'm sure that there's comments that we can relate to, and I'd love to know which comments you can relate to by... You know, putting that in the comments below. I'd love to see what type of interaction we can get going here. And at the very end of the video, I'm going to tell you my first day on the job, which is actually kind of embarrassing. I don't think I've really shared it with many people, so I'll share it today. So at the very end, I'll tell you about my first day on the job. Uh, guys, if you haven't remember the show, Tear Talks for you, you brave men and women that work in corrections. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post up a video. So today's video, we're going to have a little fun. That's the key. Let's have some fun. Let's smile. Let's see if we can get some laughs. So stand by for our sponsors. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Being a corrections officer takes its toll on even the strongest individuals. The constant need to perform at the highest level putting your life at risk in a hostile environment, and the mental scarring of traumatic experiences. 31% of corrections officers show symptoms of PTSD, and 66% of people with PTSD also suffer with a substance abuse problem. The Transformations First Responders Program is specially designed to help veterans and officers heal from the grips of addiction and PTSD in a comfortable, supportive, and serene setting. You are not alone. If you have questions about the services we offer, give us a call at 866-762-8454 to get more information on this affordable and life-changing program. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. So we're going to talk about experienced officers or experienced correctional staff first day on the job, how they felt. Are you going to miss your mom? No. No? <laughs> 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 I mean, if you stay to the very end, I'll tell you what happened to me on my first day on the job. It sucked. I wore something and I just could not. No forgiveness, if you will. <laughs> but this is great. I posted a question on my Facebook page and it's, what was your first day like when you entered the job in corrections? And I got flooded with comments. So I want to read a few. And tell me which ones you relate to, which ones that are pretty much similar to your experience on the first day, because there are definitely some here that we can relate to, especially number one. Here's your keys, go do a check. And that comes right from Rod Leak. And he knows that happened to him, happened to me. As soon as you walk into that unit, you know nothing about that unit. Here's the keys. I said my keys. I thought you said printer. Why the fuck would I say printer? Timothy Gross says, seemed like everything was going 100 miles an hour. You know, when I had to first do my count and I didn't know who the inmates were, I didn't even know where they could be during my count. Like, if they're not in my, in my area, what area could they be in? And the lieutenant calling, where's that count? Where's that count? Where's that count? And you in the back of your mind not wanting to mess it up. It was, the first count was very nerve-wracking for me. I, I Again, having to know where these inmates could be, who these inmates were, and the lieutenant just... Pounding you down for that count. Also, on my first day, very similar to what, what Hilton said here. Hilton says the inmates will show you how to get through the gates. I remember a supervisor telling me on my first day of my job, if you have any questions, go ask an inmate. He's been here for a long time. And I'm thinking here, I got all these, my peers, people with knowledge, people with experience. Why am I being told to go talk to an inmate if I have a concern. I hated that. I also remember the same feeling that Jenna had. Jenna had the exact same feeling I had when I was walking through my um, first day in, in corrections is when that pod door closes and then you wind up locked in with um, all those inmates. Oh! <laughs> oh, I'm scared! <laughs> so I don't know if you guys remember that day, but 
I remember the first day entering that facility and getting locked in, hearing that gate close and then turning around and you're surrounded by all these inmates. In her case here, Jenna says the pod door's closing behind her and then she was on the floor with another academy mate with 120 inmates by themselves. And I, I, I remember those days, the feeling. And I don't think that feeling ever left me either. That you, you, you feel that. And I think that stays with you your whole career. And that's something you don't want to kind of get complacent with. You, wanna, you want that feeling because that feeling reminds you of where you're at. So it's good that door's loud. Ryan McCurley said, walk through the center court gate and an inmate in C dorm got stabbed 38 times. So here he is fresh out of the academy and pushed right into reality of what this world's like. Oh, shit. Ja? Oh, jongens. Ja. Ik heb een ongelukje. Ik ben... Fuck. Oh. I like what Zane Harrington says. Zane Harrington says, can't say I was scared, but heightened would be a better word. But I was honored to be a part of something bigger than myself. And I still feel that, Zane. I think that's a great comment. It's a great comment. Holly says it was hectic. Lauren uses three words, exciting, chaotic, and honorable. Frank Connolly says, seems like you're in a new country learning a new language, and it's true, guys. When you're in corrections, there's a whole culture you have to learn. It's totally different than what we see in the real world. Despacito. 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 And we have to adjust to that culture. It's a different world in there. David Rio said that his field training officer gave him advice on the first day. And the advice was, if you're getting your ass beat, just hit them with your radio. Don't try calling for help because you don't get reception down here. Hello? Ms. Oniker? Yes. Hello, Ms. Oniker? Yes. Oh. Virgil faced a little uncertainty. Caitlin White said, crazy, but definitely fun. I worked with some amazing girls that made me feel welcomed. This is interesting here. Barry Beer Wyatt had some, has some time in, and I, I believe he may actually... I don't know if he's retired or not, but I know he's got some time in. And when he started his career, they didn't have uniforms. They wore civilian clothes. So he said, we haven't gotten uniforms yet, and they were in civilian clothes. So I'm wondering... If, if you were working at that time when you didn't have uniforms and you wore civilian clothes, how was that transition like? How was it when you were wearing civilians? And I'm just curious about the transition from civilians to a uniform. What, what, was the, what was it like? JJ Rendez says it was Christmas Day, 1978, and all I did was shake down a block because there was a murder in that block just before last lock on his 311 shift. That's right in the reality. Ben said, first night on my own, there was a tornado warning and had to shelter the offenders in the latrine and shower areas. Packing 80 pissed off offenders in a small area was a good icebreaker. Made the rest of the job seem pretty easy. <laughs> Robert Sabney says, I was given keys in a radio and trained on tier for an hour, then was sent on my way. I didn't go to the academy until almost a year later. Hey guys, what about, that? that that's great. Good, good point there, Rob. How many of you guys started in the facility first and then went to the academy? I'm curious about that. I actually did a video on that because there are some that still practice that. But just curious, did you go to the academy first, then the facility, or did you go to the facility, work there for a while until they got you into the academy? Mr. Acevedo says he entered the dungeon upon arrival. Field training officer let me take lead. Ended up in a fight. I learned a lot on how, to, how respect goes both ways. Eric Wood said, wow, my first day was pretty tame. Yard, utility officer, watch the yard, watch the chow move. Well, there it is. Stare down. Tim Parker said, since I've never been inside a prison or jail or anything in my life, it was mind-blowing to say the least. I went from a run-of-the-mill job to two weeks later standing on Texas death row. Kind of a change. Wow. Greg Parker said, captain on night shift, didn't even know I was coming on shift. I ended up shadowing the internal security officer all night and got to learn where everything was and the general routine. That's good. And it's good that we have training officers who actually embrace us when we come in to learn because then we can get a balance of, you know, if we're learning anything new in the academy, we can share that with them and they can give us that experience that can make us a better officer. 
Nick Kennedy says something good. He goes, intimidating at, a first, at first for a short period of time, almost 22 years ago. Back then it was old school. You shut your mouth and did a lot of listening and learning. <laughs> When you were called upon, you answered immediately. The line was unbreakable and in control. Solid times. And then there is today. Can you relate to that, guys? Think there's a difference between who we were yesterday and who we are now? I'd like to get your response on that. Jason Martin says, I started when you worked the jail before attending the academy. Again, we talked about that. I was an alternate, so I was called on a Friday and told to start that Monday. Went to B&R Uniform in Hackettstown, New Jersey on Friday evening. They hooked me up. Monday morning, I went from being a full student to being an officer. It was a shock to me. Stomach turned for days. I grew up in a small town, and nobody at the jail seemed to speak a language I could understand. As far as the first four hours of my shift, it was spent locked in a cell, so I would learn to always double lock the cell doors before a search. To this day, I will never enter a cell without a double lock. True story. It's amazing what you can learn on your first day that you take with you throughout your career. And he also mentioned the same thing as Frank Connolly did about the different language and having to adjust to that. You know, I was given advice on my first day of my career that still stayed with me is when I check a check a cell door on third shift. Again, it depends on how you how your cells are. In this case, they were actually doors that can open out. And I would always put my foot on the bottom of the door and check the lock to make sure it's in place. And then when I check the room, I start my flashlight on the ceiling and work my way down. Um, and I thought that was great advice and I've used that throughout my career when I was working the floor. Gail Mazel says, not good. Rover on midnight, eight hours straight. You know what's funny is some facilities, if you're a rookie CO coming in, you can't get any armed, armed positions. You have to wait at least a year until you pass your probation. So in this case here, this person got Rover. I don't know if that's an armed position, but it could be right as a rookie. I wonder if your facility does that. Your facility allow arm post at the beginning as soon as you went to the field? Or do you have to have a certain time in before they start giving you those arm positions? Like positions like a transport or a trip or arm patrol. Brian Sullivan was just thinking, what did I get myself into? Courtney Schaefer says, first day on the job with zero experience, shackled and walked 16 inmates to court. Then they had me transport a female 80 miles away to Peninsula for mental health. I only worked there a year and a half. Austin Langford again said, overwhelming. Ashley Bird said, I can remember having 128 grown men just staring at me like fresh meat. I can tell you how the door sounded when it slammed. I was only 22 years old and I was shocked. 25 now and I love the career I've chosen. Ryan Roback says, shock and awe, and thought of, what the hell am I doing here? Wes Connor said, felt like a setup by God. <laughs> Was hired before he even filled out the application. 35 years later, thank God for protecting me. He knew better than I did. That, that's a cool comment. Bobby Harris says, I was a police officer. The day I started corrections, a bunch of inmates yelled, new fish. I yelled back, old fish, new aquarium. <laughs> v. Serto says, he was in shock. A fight broke out did what the sergeant instructed him to do, took care of business. After all reports were written, he said, well, congratulations, kid. You got your cherry popped. <laughs> Ken Rose, I was pissed. I wasn't told that the administration said to take lunch and I worked through it, got used to it after the second shift and three years later, nothing's changed. Nothing for you. Katrina Falls says, crazy. I saw a guy I went to college with in Virginia an intake with khakis on. Hey guys, you know, let me ask you that question. And, and that's a good point. I actually did a video on this. Have you ever bumped into anybody you knew inside prison and how did you deal with it? Isn't that your fifth grade teacher? Oh shit, it is. Oh my God, he's, I think he saw us. Just curious. I want to get your perspective on that. I think it would be good for people to read that. Michael, Coleman says, when I arrived on the floor for my first day after what was called training, so he wasn't happy with the training, uh, the floor corporal gave me the employment page and said, look for a better job. He gave me the pod assignment. I went to the pod to relieve the outgoing officer. I found a note to the floor corporal. That officer walked off the job hours before my shift started. That was back in 89. I retired in 2015. Kudos to you, Michael. You know, if, if I ever found out that I had a training officer 
that was telling the officer that just came in to leave the job, I would be upset with that. I really would. I'm proud of this profession, and I want people that train my people to be proud as well. So it's good that we brought that up. You know, when I first started my career in corrections, I used to tell people that I came from another facility, try to accept some, try to get them to see me as being experienced. And as I'm telling this, I wasn't even thinking, you know, I'm gonna tell these inmates I got some experience. So I'm trying to say that I've came from these harder prisons, not realizing or just not thinking that I had COR, which is correctional officer recruit on my shirt. You dumbass. I wonder if your facility does that. If your facility puts a label to take note that you're not a senior officer. So when the inmates see you, they can see that label and then that gives them insight to maybe try to employ a game, if you will. Steve Raymond says, first day on my own, I had an inmate jump off three row. Welcome to that world, brother. That's a wake up call. <laughs> Tanya Vett said, first day on the compound was stressful. Inmates kept coming into my dorm, aggravating me until about midday. I finally put my foot down and that was it. Clayton Barrow says, the smell, oh my God, the smell. Hey, Ty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great to share some of these experiences, you know, just to kind of understand that no matter where we're at, we have similar stories to share. And I got one, I'll tell you, it may not be so similar. My wife's grandmother, she had bought me for Christmas because I, I started my academy in December of 2002 and I wind up finishing the academy in March. And we walked the facility, but we still went to the academy, but we walked the facility for a few days to get to learn the facility, but we weren't officers. We couldn't really get involved with the inmate stuff. We just shadowed a little bit, get to learn the layout. And then we went to the academy for a few months. I think it was almost four months. And the very first day I wore a giant sweater with a snowflake on it. Uh, it was a foolish move. It's been a long time since I've cried. <laughs> what would you think uh, it sounds like? Uh, um, that's all I got. That was on my first day uh, touring the facility. Four months later, after I get come out of the academy and I get my first unit, trying to be that hard officer, you know, making sure I set that tone, one of the inmates came up and said, hey, what's up, Snowflake? I said, what are you calling me Snowflake for? She goes, you were the fool with the sweater. So they remember. They remember. As always, guys, I thought it was a great topic. Love you guys. Stay safe. The show's Tear Talks. Please, please, if you haven't, subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell's going to notify you every time I post up a video. As always, guys, stay safe. And I'm going to turn off my light. Love you guys. Whoa.